Hey everybody, this is Guy with Survive. Uh, this is a new intro to the video that I shot this morning, so uh, we're pulling that down and re-uploading it with this new intro. Um, I had made a mistake, and I need to explain that, and if you see me smiling a little bit uh, already, you're gonna understand why in a second. Um, yesterday we had done an impact test video. I just used a blank because I was being lazy and it wasn't sharpened, so we were beating it through nails and stuff. It did really, really well. So this morning I had a few minutes, I was sharpening some other things. So I sharpened that blank and came back in and did some more testing, which you'll see after this new intro. But uh, just doing my due diligence, I realized I made a mistake and switched, switched up my samples. Uh, so this knife that I was calling out as 61.5 was actually one of our higher austenitizing temperature samples at 63.5. Uh, so this did this well at that higher hardness value and it's blowing my mind right now. Uh, we had a mix up, we had a few samples of a, of a higher hardness and a few samples of a lower hardness. And I had done initial destruction testing uh, with unfinished blanks, so I knew which is which, but uh, I worked some through samples after I figured out that the, the lower temperature was slightly more durable. Uh, so we ran with that for our first production batch, but then I got these samples mixed up. But uh, I went over and Rockwell tested it this morning across the street just to confirm uh, what was what. And I'm happy to report this knife with all these geometries and everything uh, at 63.5 handled this abuse uh, this well. So um, know that our first batch here is all done to the lower value at the 61 to 62, which is even a little tougher than what I've shown you uh, with not, I, I couldn't notice any difference in edge holding or anything like that. So we just went with what had the little bit higher damage threshold for the batches. So um, just know that I made a mistake with the video we posted yesterday and with the information that's gonna come after this new intro. Uh, this was our 61.5 sample. And the thing we have been beating up is the 63 and a half Rockwell sample. So. Holy crap. Uh, without any further ado, we'll get into the uh, little bit of abuse testing we did this morning. Before I sign off, um, I think the camera and everything, how the filming angle is, shows some of this burnishing more as damage than it actually is in real life. Uh, there's not really any deviations. There's like a tiny wire in a couple of spots where we hit this through the nails, but uh, I just wanted to show you really quickly here. It's gonna catch a little bit, I think, but um, I don't think we're gonna have any problems. So starting way back here and just moving forward, it still slices paper. So just know that even after everything we did in that video uh, yesterday and then sharpening it and going through that today, this is still 100% functional outside of, you know, if you wanted to really, really be slicing in those couple of areas, we'd wanna strop it. But otherwise, uh, not really any significant damage, nothing that's gonna impair performance. So. Wow, uh, K90 is shaping up exactly how I'd hoped. And I'm so excited for you guys to start getting these. Uh, we've got plenty of these headed through finishing. So as you're getting these, um, as interesting as all of this nail chopping and stuff is, uh, the purpose of this is to show you the durability standard and some of the performance of this. So what I'm interested in is seeing like how long we can carve wood and how much wood we can baton and things where the, the amazing properties of this are really gonna start shining in practical applications for outdoor knives. And I think you guys are really, really, really gonna enjoy the performance of this. So uh, you can get to the testing here uh, after this new intro, but just know uh, that was the mix up and that's what's happened. So uh, these are gonna perform even better than what I was already impressed with. So uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Uh, I say that a lot because I don't script anything. So each segment I probably have a sign off. But uh, again, we'll talk to you again soon. Good morning, everybody. This is a follow-up to yesterday's impact testing. Uh, this morning, we have added a cutting edge. I just sharpened this in by hand this morning. Uh, it's around 20 degrees per side and just a standard polish finish. I didn't do anything crazy here. So uh, let's see how this is going to do. This is, again, a K890. Uh, Rockwell tested this particular blade at 61.5. So we're going to see what she does at that hardness value. 
Uh, again, this is well sub 20 thousandths. Uh, we grind the EDC4 to a nominal edge thickness of about 14 thousandths before adding the cutting edge. So even with that V edge on there, we are way below 20 thousandths in cross section there. So uh, again, this is an efficient design, uh, designed for daily carry. So we wanted it to have good cutting efficiency and just be a pleasure to use uh, rather than being an overbuilt thing that's less functional. So uh, not designed to pass tests. This is just a, just looking at the properties of this K890 heat treated by Peter's Heat Treat to this value. So uh, I think it's gonna do pretty good with uh, good compressive strength and at this hardness, the ability to also absorb some energy um, that's indicative of, of a good combination of circumstances for a hard use knife. Um, you know, good edge holding, good edge stability with still uh, a high ability to absorb some energy so that we don't have part failure um, and have that tool failing suddenly during use. So without any further ado, we're gonna get to it here and see what happens. So starting off here, uh, we've got that number 10 nail. I haven't done this yet, so uh, we're just gonna learn this together here. Uh, most of what I've done up to here was more abusive, just seeing what it's gonna take to get it to break, and that's not the best method. And I'd also like to mention, we just have very limited time here. I like some of the suggestions on different testing, but I know there's really good reviewers out there that, um, you know, they've got paid channels and stuff and they're super into doing different types of relative testing so uh, maybe let's start getting some of those people involved in this as well and uh, just make this a fun community again here and uh, just see where we can all push these together so uh, here we go start back here and see where we land into the plate there again pretty good and through that number 10 nail so we have a little bit of burnishing here but there is not really any edge damage um, nothing is compressed there let's see if I can yep so we still have really good edge stability there uh, rub some of that dirt off there one second there we go so there's a tiny little wire that we've created, but other than that, uh, the edge hasn't retreated. Uh, we don't have any big compressive failures. Uh, so to me, that would drop right out if you happen to encounter a nail and uh, you know for some reason you couldn't stop cutting, you just gotta keep going through it. Uh, you're not gonna have an edge failure there. So we're gonna do that again, just to make sure that wasn't a fluke. And I'm gonna choose a spot that's just slightly ahead of that last spot. Again, no edge failure at all. Uh, that even looks better. So uh, let's see if we can see that. Yep, so there's a little bit of dirt and just some burnishing there. So uh, like yesterday, I'll come back in and wipe this off with some WD-40. But so far we've got a hit there, hit there. Uh, no edge failure, no retreat. Um, just a little more dull. So uh, I think that would all strop out. I'm not even seeing a flat spot on the apex. So again, very, very impressive. So uh, next, let's just go for the hat trick here because I do need to get to back to work. Uh, I saw lots of the comments yesterday uh, about get back to work. And please know that we are working very hard here. It's just people do have questions. So from time to time, as I get a few minutes, uh, I just wanna make sure that I can, you know, keep moving things forward, answering questions as well as doing some work. And to a lesser extent, this is just mentally stimulating for me first thing here in the morning and gives me things to think about while I'm doing just the uh, production work during the day. So here we are, uh, one of these big nails, and let's see how we do here. So again, through that, got a big depression in the aluminum plate from uh, the energy we sent into that. But again, we've got burnishing, but no edge failure. So uh, no flat spot or anything like that back there that's anything of significance. So again, this is still perfectly functional and we don't have any kind of failure or significant deviation even of the apex there. So uh, 
yeah, it did a great job unsharpened and yesterday's test, uh, I was mostly trying to show the compressive strength of this material and its ability to resist damage. But, uh, you know, even in the sharpened configuration here, we've got some burnishing, but no significant damage of any kind. And I'm really happy we don't have any uh, half moons blown into the edge where the edge has uh, failed and is retreating under that compressive stress. So we have good stability uh, due to the complex chemistry of this to where the compressive strength allows for good strength and resisting damage, uh, but then we also have the toughness, that resistance to impact failure that's high enough so that this is not failing by impact and having blowouts either. So. Again, uh, we'll keep the testing going, but uh, that's what I was trying to show yesterday and even here in the sharpened uh, configuration, it handles all that really, really well. So again, I got to get back to work, but uh, there you go. Very, very pleased with that. So uh, with that being at 61 and a half, uh, wow, uh, couldn't be happier with the performance of this. I think this is going to do really well across a wide range of circumstances. And uh, this is right in the sweet spot of this hardenability curve for this material. Um, we do have higher values we could go to in applications where it's going to, the tool is going to face less impact stress, uh, where I think we can impre increase the compressive values even higher in smaller things like a folder or a kitchen knife. Uh, where you want that good stability and it's not going to be uh, facing impact stresses like that. I think that we can bump this up quite a few Rockwell points yet. So uh, right here for an outdoor knife, I think we got a really good heat treat, uh, good stability there. It's not gonna fail uh, if you happen to encounter something hard. Uh, like I said before, I don't ever suggest chopping metal with metal. Uh, that's never a good recipe for success, but your tool isn't going to fail if you encounter something that's harder uh, while you're doing some other cutting tasks. So I hope that uh, did a good job of informing you on the durability of the Bowler K890. And from here, uh, we'll do some other videos as we get time, but I'd really, again, like to uh, know who we like these days out in the YouTube community and the knife industry to carry on some, some good relative testing. So with that, I'm gonna sign off for now and get back to work, but uh, we got a lot going on. So keep hanging out and we'll keep the updates going. Have a great day, you guys. Okay, had to get this set up here on the workbench uh, real quick, just to do some closer up shots here and some final thoughts. So uh, I measured the weight of this edge uh, as best I could find here. Uh, we're right around 16 thousandths right now behind the edge. Uh, so we're significantly below 20 thousandths. Um, so I'm really, really happy with the performance in that thin of a cross section here behind the edge. And I uh, just wanted to show you real quick here. I just wiped things off with some WD-40, but uh, we have no damage that went past the edge. If I can get this to focus, maybe. There we go. Um, and then other than just a tiny little bit of rolling, um, there's nothing. So I'm, I'm super happy about that and just the performance here. And the thicker material, I can see where we started to get a little deflection there. You can just see that tiny little bubble there. And I'm super happy to see that in this thin cross section because that's telling me even at 61 and a half Rockwell, uh, I can tell I hit this a little off uh, square. So the material started to yield just a skosh um, off to one side there. And that's showing me that we've got good ductility in this material, even at a high hardness. Uh, so this is going to want to yield over uh, failing by mode of impact fracturing. Uh, so I'm, I'm super happy. Uh, this material is shaping up exactly what I was hoping for. Uh, we've got that high compressive strength with that still having enough ductility to yield if you know, if you keep putting energy in something, the energy has to go somewhere. So I'm happy to see that uh, in this really thin cross section, we can see that the material wants to yield over fracturing. So uh, for a hard use knife, that's really important that the material can still withstand and be functional 
um, even if it does give a little bit, uh, I, I always want to see that over a outright failure. So very, very happy here. Um, I think all this would buff out for the most part here, maybe a little stropping uh, for some of this, but uh, that's nothing. So anyway, uh, I'm going to get back to work here, but I uh, just wanted to share that, where the edge thickness was in all of this, uh, blade hardness, what material we're doing, and then let's take a closer look at the work that we went through. So that's the number 10 nail. So very, very happy with that. And then uh, whatever this thicker doodad is, I'll show you the difference here. But that's a big, big nail. And uh, for that to plow its way through there with such a delicate edge and not really have any damage is very, very impressive to me. And uh, I could not be happier with the performance of the steel so far. So anyway, uh, there's my findings. So uh, I'm going to get back to work, but I hope you found all this enjoyable. I'm um, sorry I talked so much, but have a great day and we'll talk to you again soon.